Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Cardinal O'Hara High School. It's the site of a 3A boys basketball first round matchup here in the PIAA. It's Delone Catholic from District 3 taking on the champions of District 12, Devin Prep, Bob Long. Bruce Badgley, Huck Palmer is with us here, and Brady Joyce on the camera. We will meet DeLone Catholic starters, number 10, Aiden Whitmer, Cam Keller. We'll take an eye out for him all day long. Over 1,000 career points, averaging 12.5 points per contest. Gage Zimmerman, a three-sport athlete, averaging nine points and five rebounds per contest. Luke Rebert. He's going to be that double-double type of guy, 11 and 8 on the year. The only real big on this team, a basketball first guy, and then Braden Smith, a football star who averages 9 and 3. And now the starters for Devin Prep will get into eligibility for this Devin Prep team. They are down two guys that played a big part in the team's success this year. They'll be without Mason Thier and Calvin Smith. The starters... For Devin Prep. Zach Orchard steps into the starting lineup and in a starting role with the departure of those two. Zane Conlin, the leading scorer on this team at 18 points per contest. He will be a key for this team. Cooper Fairlam, he's jumped into a starting role as well. Shane Doyle will start for the Devin Prep Tide. This should be a tem tremendous matchup. I will turn this over now to Huck Palmer. Huck, back on the broadcast for the first time since you were made famous down at the Fluster. <laughs> Welcome back. How's fame life? Once again, Bob, uh, I think you're taking it a little too far. For the <laughs> Come famous, on, the yeah. famous part. Um, it's great. I'm, I'm glad to be back, as always. I'm glad to be here with you and Bruce. Uh, this should be a good day of basketball. Uh, um, this should be an exciting game, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Devin Prep. Sponsoring this telecast, appreciate them being part of our crew here today. And Cool River Restaurant and Tavern will learn a lot about them as the day goes along. Thanks to our sponsors for making high school basketball made possible and bringing it to your home or wherever you may be watching us. So we'll do that again. And now we are underway with Devin Prep dressed in white and DeLone Catholic. Dressed in black. They spaced the floor so well. Oh. And a good start for Zane Conlin, shooting it at a clip of 41% from distance this season. Yeah, not a lot of attempts for him, but he's got a good percentage. He's in the top 10 in the Catholic League in percentage, and he's been their headliner all year long. And Devin Prep out on the break. They are waving off the basket as Fairlam got into the lane. We'll see where that contact comes. There's the nudge, and a little too early for going into that gather. Good call. Great dish. Oh, going up to get the block. What a play by Rebert. Leads the team in blocks this year for DeLone Catholic. There is a reason why. And let's see how uh, Devin Prep adjusts to these starters being out of the lineup, Hawk. I'm not only in substitution pattern for Coach Fisher, but also offensive chemistry of the five that are out there. Yeah, they had a, they had a game underneath their belt against uh, Mass Civics and Science in the in the 3A City Championship, and they fared pretty well in that one. That's absolutely right. Mass Civics and Science is missing a few players themselves, huh, due to eligibility. But yes, this is the reality for teams like Mass Civics and Sciences and Devin Prep, ineligible for the entirety of the PIAA playoffs. This is a team that won the PIAA state championship two years ago, Devon Prep. Made a deep run last year. Fellow 3A team West Catholic from Philadelphia won the state title last year, and this will stay with Devon Prep. So Fairlam gets a start here. He's a freshman. He's only played in nine games. He's had, his only start was uh, in that Mass Civics and Science game. Inside, Zane Conlin slither is his way to the hoop. He has so many moves down there. He's very adept. He's patient. He's poised. He uses his strength to clear space, and he's very effective down there. Good hands there by the tide of Devin Prep. Yeah, that's that's going to be a real problem for DeLong Catholic if he's going to do the inside-outside game for Prep today. Get another look here. 
We're back to live action. Reese Kraft, number 21, the long, rangy wing, guards on the outside. Zimmerman gives it up. There's a three for Cam Keller. You know he can stroke it from deep. Yeah, and very important that, you know, these guys that each team are going to have to lean on get off the good starts. That's going to be well short. Didn't draw any iron. Keller brought it down. Numbers for DeLone Catholic. Rare to see that from Devin Prep, but fuck, they just didn't turn and sprint back. Yeah, the youngster there was, I guess, uh, still looking at his shot that fell well short. Didn't get back there, and the guy just coasted right past him. Kraft. Great interior passing, and Kraft is hit by Keller. His Duel, first. Duel's a really good player for them. He does a lot. He's one of five players in the Catholic League that has over 100 assists and 100 rebounds. Um, he, he leads the league in charges. Uh, and his scoring's been better recently, too. Uh, he does a lot of things well. Reese Kraft, the 64% foul shooter. By the way, statistics for Philadelphia Catholic League teams brought to you courtesy of my partner to my right, Huck Palmer. <laughs> I'm finally caught up, Bob. That's right. Well, you can excuse that. It was just basketball game after basketball game. Monday, Friday, split every single week for about 40 days. 7-5. DeLone Catholic gets it to that guy again. Keller was halfway down. He shoots the ball with confidence. I like the way he pulls up there. Kraft, physical, got his own rebound. That's way too strong. But Devin Prep is owning the offensive glass. Zane Conlon was a starter last year, and I think about 18 of... Gave it away. Devin Prep, that's the second steal of that variety, Shane Doyle. And Shane Doyle also leads the league in steals. And DeLone really looking like they want to up this tempo. But you're not supposed... (laughs) Not good when you're throwing the ball away like they have the last two times. Uh, one immediately led to a basket, and here now De- uh, Devin Prep with another opportunity. Well, Bruce, and pardon the pun, and I think Huck will appreciate this one, but, I mean, Devin Prep, they really do. They come at you in waves, and it's a team that just, it's so hard to hang with them for 32 minutes. You may nab them for a couple minutes here or there, but they move to the basketball so well. They're so disciplined offensively. Oh, and then they control the glass in situations like that. They're a very good rebounding team. They're top five in the Catholic League in rebounding. Well short. A nice check out that time from Gage Zimmerman. Again up the floor. Oh, great hustle there by uh, Orchard. Yeah, it's really hard to come to grips with that call, though, Bruce, because, I mean, that's either a foul, which I believe it absolutely was, but, I mean, very clearly hit last if there's no foul call by DeLone Catholic. In my mind, that should be a foul and two shots at the line. Doyle brings that down. Floater just won't go for number 45, Cooper Fairlam. 11-5 with four minutes and 11 seconds to play here in this first quarter. A great venue, by the way, for PIAA State Tournament Basketball. One of the nicest venues, Hawk, in the Philadelphia Catholic League. And I guess no surprise also, you're here not too far from your home. It's definitely the closest (laughs) for me. But they really, all kidding aside, have done a great job with this venue. Chrissy Dugan, the AD here, just a first-class organization. I always enjoy coming up here with football, basketball, baseball. Uh, I bring the kids up every now and then. They do a good job. Boy, Devin Prep just all over DeLone Catholic on the defensive side. Zimmerman is guarded by the longer craft, and they'll reset. Aiden Whitmer. Five-second count is on. Able to break the hip. Good look for Gage Zimmerman. Oh. Kelnitz and one. That was just a great dish back and then drive to the basket. Raw. Playing off two feet there, Huck. That's what allows you to do that. An aggressive cut off the ball. Help out that ball handler and finish strong at I the love, rim. I love kids who play off of two feet. Uh, I try to get my, <clears throat> my younger guys where I coach to do it. 
back to a three-point game. That's the Villanova way too, Bob. It that, sure <coughs> is. That, that was a starburst shot, right? We learned that last night. <laughs> <laughs> Our buddy Matt Paul came up with that one. Hey, there's a triple from distance. McClendon knocked it down. Instant dividends off the bench for him. Oh. And another pick of the pocket from Doyle. Doyle, nice finish. Very unassuming defensive player. He's got really good hands, got great positioning, leads the league, like I said, in charges. Um, a solid player. Yeah, three steals per contest. McClendon got a hand on it. And DeLone Catholic trying to return the favor, but Doyle is having a day. And all of it off schedule, Huck. All of it either in transition or off a of steal. Uh, they're trying to put the plate fast, and the quality of play is suffering out there, Huck. DeLone Catholic, anyway. It definitely. I mean, I mean, uh, Devin Prep was 10 and 13 coming into this game, but they really challenged themselves. They play in a great league and they played a really, um, ambitious non-league schedule. McClendon, good catch and no reset in the half court. McClendon, one of those guys as well that just did not see a ton of time in the regular season, but due to fear being out of the game and, and Smith also not being eligible, he's getting a lot of time. A tough shot, just riding on the hip, though, of Zane Conlon, who picks up the personal foul, second team foul against Devin Prep. Yeah, and again, uh, the lone Catholic just at the point of just damn the torpedoes full steam at the basket. Well, he's a football star at the lone Catholic, Bruce, and there were some football elements to that play. You Put down it. your head and get downhill. Absolutely. That's, that was Colin's second found, and Devin Preps got to be careful here and have to manage uh, his last two minutes of the second first quarter with him out of the game. He, he really is, uh, you know, he's the guy that, that they go through, and uh, he's their leader out there. He's one of the most improved players in the league. Started 19 to 22 last year and only averaged four and a half, about three rebounds a game, but he pumped that up to, uh, he's like 17.8 and, and nine and a half rebound, uh, 17 and a half points per game, nine and a half rebounds. Wow. Mr. Double Double then. Yes, he's, he's fourth or fifth in the league with those. He has nine double doubles this year. Wide open three. McClendon brought it down inside and Devin Kraft just is owning the offensive glass, but none of them are able to fall. They yeah. play hard. Yeah, good hands by Dolan Catholic in there, too. Ben Costello, one-on-one -on -one against Reverend, and he's the first on the floor. Ben Costello, wonderful defensive intensity. Very good defensive player. Led the league in charges last year. I believe had 19 and has 10 this year. And he's he's been hurt a lot this year. He's been in and out of the lineup, and his, and his time has been limited even when he, and he has been playing. McClendon got the steal. He's been active defensively early on. Contact. And I believe it's N1. I, I'm not sure what that official was waving off there. I think he was actually talking to DeLone Catholic's defender before actually counting the bucket. <laughs> but we're going to count it here. <laughs> and it was a slight delay there. I mean, look at that. Wow. Almost like he hey, was he turning like away from the, from the play. Let's, let's slow it down even more. And this is free throw is good, by the way. But again, he's going to, the fair for is, is he not pointing to the ground? <laughs> I don't know. Well, anyway, good call, regardless of the delivery. Gage Zimmerman. That'll A go jump back. ball. That'll go back over to Delo, but he was fortunate. He'd driven himself into trouble down there deep. Yeah, another look at couple of defenders getting their hands in there right in front of the Devon Prep student section. They are the Tide, so certainly appropriate that it is beach-themed day. Costello, nice job to avoid the defender and a solid finish. Nice steal. Another steal by Duel there, and then he gets the dime on, the back, on his way down. I mean, that's already four, I believe, on the day. Make it five. And yeah. he traveled with it. But I think that will be the key here, Bruce, for DeLone Catholic, a team coming from District 3. This is a high level of defensive intensity. And candidly, yes, it's a 13-point deficit, a 23-point first quarter. But so much of that has come off turnovers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what I was talking about. You know, they're, they're just sacrificing the quality of play for just going toward the basket at all costs. 
Reese Kraft picks up the personal foul. 43.6 seconds to play here in this first quarter. Yeah, Devin has really, uh, you know, established a pace here that I'm not sure DeLone Catholic wants to find himself in for and a long And a technical parts. foul, Hawk, beg your pardon, has been assessed to Cam Keller. Oh, my. And that's also a personal foul, of course, at the high school level. And but under a minute in the quarter, too. Did Ouch. I hear that? I'm sorry, Bruce. Did I hear that correctly? That Was that his first personal foul? I missed it, Bob. I didn't yeah, I'm sorry, Bob. I I was I thought I might have heard third. Well, and they he only sits have, down. They only have three. Does he have all three fouls? Right, that's the question. Doyle. And the sitting down part could just be for him, the coach letting him could know be. that he can't, you know, get in a situation like that, especially with his team down. Double digits already. By the way, that's that's actually incorrect. We were t- it looked like it was three. It looks like they updated the scoreboard all at once. Five team fouls against the lone Catholic. Yeah, so they added the foul, uh, the foul, and the technical right. all at once. Okay. What a job on the offensive glass from Reese Kraft. Yeah, that's what he does. He hangs around the basket. He can go out and he can stretch it a little, and he'll he'll hit a three from time to time. But when he's, when he's effective, he's by the bass. He's using that lamp to get offensive rebounds and putbacks. 17 seconds left here in this first quarter. It's a lone Catholic looking to get a good look here somewhere. Another great set of hands. They're going to get a look at the horn. Offensive foul is the call. Ben Costello Bob, stands in. Devin Prep is the best in the business at taking charges. They, I looked at this earlier. They had 62 team charges last year. They're at 36 this year, so they, they just picked up one. They're one away for 100 over the last two years. 3.7 to play. Doyle. He's going to get a decent look. It's good if it goes. Oh. It's a heck of a job to get down the floor and create that look. Through one quarter, Devin Prep all over DeLone Catholic. It's 27 to 10. We want to thank our sponsor here today on the Devon Prep Basketball Broadcast. Cool River Restaurant and Tavern located in the Embassy Suites Hotel Valley Forge. What makes Cool River so unique is our wood-burning grill and slow smoker. We've managed to capture the Texas barbecue flavor in all of our steaks and chops. And all of our unique sauces are made here from scratch in the kitchen. The hickory smoked prime rib is probably the best prime rib you will ever taste. And our honey glazed Atlantic salmon with molasses bourbon butter is just spectacular. And by the way, my mouth is watering right now. (laughs) You're like, I got to stop there on the way home. But we're not done because the Angus Hickory Grilled Cheeseburger and Chicken Sandwich are crowd pleasures for guests of all tastes and ages. The atmosphere is comfortable, wineless approachable, service impeccable, and we know that you'll enjoy your visit to Cool River. You can visit them at 888 Chester Book Boulevard in Valley Forge, and we want to thank them for sponsoring this telecast. And I say this from the bottom of my heart, support the sponsors and support those that are supporting high school athletics. And thanks very much to those fine folks for sponsoring this contest. It's like DeLone back into a man defense. Fairburn, great job defensively running to the basketball. McClendon picks up defensively. It's in a tough spot. Braden Smith came to the basketball. Great cut to the hole. Just couldn't finish. And it'll go the other way. That was a nice drop off there. It's a shame they couldn't finish that. Yeah, DeLone has really had some opportunities to get to the basket. They just haven't been able to finish, Bob. You just never know in these matchups. You know, one team comes in at 19 and 6, 19 and 7. Devin's only 10 and 13. So, you know, from the outside, it might seem, oh, well, DeLone is the superior team. But a lot of it is, is predicated on, um, what league you play in and how you challenge yourself outside of the, in the non-league part of the season. 
Rebert for three. That one's no good. Mm. And Fairlam came up with it. That's a great job by Cooper Fairlam. Great Kraft, catch here. Really nice catch. Boy, they Give him two the... offensive rebounds on the play. Letting the play underneath there, Hawk. There is some bumping and grinding, Bob. I liked it though. I, I thought, I, until they called the foul, I thought everything was good. And uh, he, he, like, he, he pounced the boards. Yeah, I think he ended up getting three offensive rebounds by the time he put that last one up. Kraft is such a talented player. 64% free throw shooter on the year, but does so many things well. Six rebounds per contest. He got half of that on that possession alone. He's been pretty consistent from this year. Um, sometimes, you know, he'll, 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 he'll disappear in games from time to time. But, but his numbers speak for themselves. There's another steal. Great look from McClendon. Strong catch over the shoulder. And a late foul call in the act of shooting. Well, to your point about Kraft and whether he becomes less engaged at times, they, there's really no room for that right now, certainly in the state playoffs. With Fear and Calvin Smith being out for the remainder of the state playoffs, of course, from eligibility standpoint, in today's contest, you saw Zane Conlon go out with two early personal fouls. You're effectively three guys down, Huck, and so... And they they have managed uh, and then some since uh, Condoms left the game. Right. You can see Kraft's only averaging 22 minutes per game, which is a solid number. But uh, Conlon and Doyle and, and Thayer and Smith mm-hmm. were all higher than him. They've always yeah, and they've always gone deep this program as well. And we talked to Jason Fisher in the Philadelphia Catholic League playoffs preview podcast. Strong drive to the hoop. But when we did talk to. Jason Fisher, I asked the question and I let it off with, there's a difference between a great season and a great program, and it's the ability to build off that season, build that culture, and I asked the question, Huck, because I thought this program has developed that culture and is becoming a great program, and so there are players coming up that are youngsters that are playing here today through the program that are Devin Prep types of guys, and they play the system. And they find themselves now with a huge opportunity in the state playoffs. Definitely. By the way, my ears, uh, I beg your pardon, my ears did not mistake me. Cam Keller with three personal fouls. That's why he's been on the bench. But, Huck, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, and this experience for these younger guys is really going to benefit them next year because, you know, you, some could think that this year with, with five starters being juniors that, you know, uh, Devin is, you know, a year away from making some serious uh, noise both in the Catholic League and at the state level. Um, but they... <laughs> They're, they're good enough right now to, to, to win a couple games in this tournament and, and then take their chances moving forward. So I wouldn't count them out to, you know, this season just yet with the guys being down and for being relatively young. Yeah, you never know. I mean, you know, it's all about developing chemistry and, you know, a different dynamics sometimes can, you know, actually uh, provide uh, more benefit. And matchups, you never know what kind of matchup you're going to get and uh, that type of thing. Dangerous there, the way he caught that basketball right nope. around midcourt. That was very close. Devin preps it to half step late, trying to go for the steal. Zimmerman for three. That one didn't draw any iron, and Doyle picked it up amongst three DeLone Catholic offensive rebounders. Fairlam. Good swing for Kraft. Bingo. Reese Kraft knocks it down. It's a 21-point game. And if I'm Kraft, when the season's over, I'm in the gym shooting two, three, four hundred jumpers a day because if he adds that to his game more consistently, he's going to be a terrific player next year as a senior. Give Rebert a ton of credit. Loose ball. He's the only one that gets on the floor, Bruce, and it results in the bucket. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, DeLone's still out there fighting, but I tell you what, they're really hamstrung with Keller on the bench. Reese Kraft knocks it down. It's a per pass by Doyle. Well, you nailed it, Bruce, because we've been talking about Devin Prep with the 
two guys ineligible and Doyle on the bench in foul trouble. Yes, maybe there's a lower number of guys that we're talking about on the lone Catholic side that are in some sort of foul trouble, eligibility, no issues there. But this team just isn't as deep as what Devin Prep is. Liam O'Brien. Yeah, the, the effort there is there. They're just having a difficult time against, you know, the athletes that Prep's throwing out there. Doyle, no, and that's last touched here by De- the lone Catholic. Yeah, we're only a quarter and a half in, but just, just to me right now, uh, not a great matchup for De- DeLone. DeLone looks like to me, they have some strong physical kids. There's a lot of muscle on the team, and, but, but, uh, Devin can match that, and Devin probably has the advantage in, in the skill department. Look who's back in the game. Zane Conlon with the two personal fouls late in the first ha- uh, half here. Conlon. Oh. Got to avoid that third foul. Again up the floor, Zimmerman. Oh, just missed the layup. Zimmerman slow getting back, too. Nobody closes out. And that is the third personal foul that goes against Zane Conlon. So Jason Fisher, the head coach of Devon Prep, took a chance. I mean, certainly they're comfortable with the lead. And Conlon picks up his third. Yeah, Conlon's got to recognize that sooner. He 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 plays so hard that I think sometimes, he'll, you know, he just gets into the action without possibly thinking that through as much as he needs to. He needs to be on the court. And, and that ball wasn't one out of it had been a 50-50 ball for him. So maybe let that one go and live to, live to play another, you know, another time down the court. Yeah, and especially as you advance in the tournament here, down two starters, it's important that he stay in the game just to be able to uh, provide some leadership for the rest of those guys. Timeout on the floor. He does lead the team in fouls I'm looking at here. He's 70 <laughs> fouls on the year. It's 3.2 <laughs> per, per game. Wow. Uh, so he, he he's not uh, opposed to mixing it up. Take a quick break here, folks, and we'll tell you a little bit about the school sponsoring this broadcast here today. Devin Prep. the timeout. DeLone Catholic slices into the lane and it's an offensive foul. Oh. Shane Doyle stands in. That's his 13th of the year and that is the 100th charge over the last two years. Now if I'm a DeLone Catholic fan, my argument here is that he's a little deep in that lane. There's no restricted arc and it doesn't have to be considered by officials at this level, but a lot of times you do see them take that into account. Orchard gives it up. Costello knocked it down. Well, they're just firing on all cylinders, Hawk. They're playing well inside Devin Prep, and now they're starting to hit him from out. And McClendon got a steal. And he traveled with it. May have slipped and gets up a tiny bit gimpy there. Yeah, he had had teammates on the right and the left of him. Uh, he's, He's probably got to stop at the foul line or just inside the foul line there and drop that off. But they're getting contributions from everybody. Whitmer gave it up, but that's a dangerous pass. Fortunate to come back up with it. Not a steal, but it'll hit, it'll hit the deflection there, Calm. And a giveaway. The deflection first came by number 22, Zachary Orchard, and then off the leg of the ball handler, Zimmerman. Zachary Orchard, by the way, younger brother of Lucas, Lucas Orchard. Orchard, who was... Very productive player at, at, at Devon. Yeah, at one point, he was one of the top scorers in the Philadelphia Catholic League. I think his junior year? Yes. And was on that state championship team as well. He was. One of those keys. McClendon lets it go oh. from three. Boy, just add on another guard from Devin Prep who can stretch the floor, Bruce. Yeah, absolutely. And Coach Coletti's got uh, 
Cam Keller back in the game. I believe McClendon had a three-pointer earlier, and if he did, that's two for the game, and he came into this game with one. Being inserted into a much larger role, mm -hmm. Huck. There's no doubt about it. Keller, by the way, back out onto the floor with three fouls. So do they go right at him? They do, and no foul comes from it. And I believe that he just picked up his fourth personal foul. Who will that go against? Oh, my goodness, it goes against Rebert. That's a huge call. Yeah, that was a, <laughs> a big call there. But I'll tell you what. Uh, Delone, you know, down, you know, 25 here with two minutes to go, really has to try and muster up something. And I'm sure Coach Coletti there is just like, hey, let's win the last two minutes, guys, okay? And and take it, you know, in, in segments here. Yeah, it's a possession by possession you now. The baby steps to, you know, get yourself, try to get yourself back in this game, find some momentum. They have to start taking care of the ball better. They're, I, I'd have to, their turnovers have to be around 12 or 13 at this point. Timeout called. Yeah. With 2.05 to play. Yeah, it just seemed like, you know, regardless of the consequence, they were just going full speed at the basket and they were, they've just been, you know, a bit out of control, um, it, you know, causing some of these turnovers. But, you know, just as we talked about, you know, you got to take it in segments here. I'm sure Coach Coletti is talking about, Hey, what are we going to do the last, you know, two minutes here? And even as you talked about, let's see what kind of uh, offense they run coming out of the timeout. You definitely want to find something positive. You got 2.05 left here in the second quarter, down 27. You know, that the score hits, uh, if that spread gets to 30 in the second half, you know what happens. Mm -hmm. yep. yep, running clock. Let's. Let's talk a little bit about this Delone Catholic program because it is an interesting story. These guys are playing up effectively. You know, this senior class has led a resurgence here at Delone Catholic, and they've put them in a position now to be in the state playoffs at the 3A level. But in reality, this is a team that was classified as a 3A team by three, three boys at the last set of classifications. They're dropping to 2A next year. The head coach, Brandon Staub, we had an opportunity to talk with him earlier this week. He started coaching years ago with the freshman girls at DeLone Catholic, then the JV girls, and then he left to be the head coach at Biglerville, a boys program, for two years. And then the DeLone Catholic job reopened and had the opportunity to come back. And coach here again, big block by Costello. Fifth year with the program for Staub. They were 17 and 9 each of the last two years, 19 and 7 this year. Runner up in the District 3 title game last year. He's got some lineage as well. His father went to the Lone Catholic. Staub is a little sound guy originally, but so thrilled to be coaching this program. And, you know, Huck from a it's just so hard when you're that on the, that smaller end of the classification to come out and compete. And this is going to be a tough out at the 2A level next year. Oh, certainly. At Littlestown, I think they that's two of their losses to that to that club. That's who Newman played last night. That's a tough call. That is. That's a 27 point game I, call. I would agree. <laughs> I would agree. So I don't have an issue with it. Yep. That's what we call in the business light contact. Devin from, will never shy away from contact. No. Uh, they, they actually welcome it. Robert is in trouble. Held ball. It'll stay here with the lone Catholic. Also a heck of a nickname. We just heard it over the public address, the Squires. Squires. Yeah. We have the Squires and the Tide going at it here today. Rebert gives it up. Doyle. And Rebert is slow to get up. He took a shot, but that looks pretty clean. And a technical foul has been called against the head coach. 
Yeah, that's frustration setting in. I, I thought the steal was clean. Um, Doyle really showed good instincts on that and, and came at it with the left hand too, Huck. Yes, right? and timed it, timed it sort of perfectly. Rebert just did not have any awareness that Doyle was coming. They spun right into it. Doyle knocks the first one down, and it is a 30-point game. 53% foul shooter on the year. Stroke looked a lot better than that there. Doyle. It, it's the one area where he struggled a little bit is, is his shooting overall. I, I think there's more in the tank there. I, I think he's another one getting the gym this, this all season and, and you know, kind of uh, work on that, that part of his game because he does. If you look at his stats down there, uh, he's all over the uh, – He's all over the stat column. He, he's a regular, you know, five, six assists a game, five, six rebounds, two or three steals. Three for four there with two technical fouls. And by the way, one of the unique PIAA rules is as a head coach, when you are assessed a technical foul, you have to sit on the bench for the remainder of the game. Some coaches uh, across the state need reminding of that too. Yeah. <laughs> once they're once they're put in that place, real life version of timeout from when you were little. Nice pass. Just couldn't finish. Orchard got two hands on it though, and now Devin Prep. They're asking to move the basketball as Jason Fisher, Fairlam no, Orchard. Great effort from Delone Catholic, and they get the timeout. Yeah, you know, you get into situations like this during the regular season, and, you know, there's really opportunity for teaching moments for coaches. But, you know, when you get into these situations and it's your last game of the year, you know, I think it's a, a different situation, you know, for the head coach and, you know, how he approaches, you know, games like this. What do you think, Huck? No, definitely. Um, but, you know, there's always a, a time for some teaching moments, whether it's your first game, last game, or in the middle. Um you know, he's building character over there. He's trying to keep his kids engaged. Uh, you know, he wants them to continue to fight, you know, and that, and that's when they show those types of characteristics, that is something they can take with them, all, you know, away from this game and into other parts of their lives. This broadcast is sponsored by Cool River Restaurant and Tavern, located in the NBC Suites Hotel at 888 Chesterbrook Boulevard in Valley Forge. Stop by for authentic Texas barbecue flavor. That is in all of their steaks and chops, made in their wood-burning grill and slow smoker. All of their unique sauces are made from scratch in their kitchen. Their Angus Hickory grilled cheeseburgers and chicken sandwich are crowd pleasers as well. A great place to go before or after the game. Well, I think I know where I'm going post-game, guys. I don't know about you. All right. You're tempting me, Bob. I tell you what. I don't know if I can make it out there, but... Man... The way you describe it, it's like none other. Uh-huh. I don't. I don't think it is like any other. Well, I'm glad it's a read rather than a video because if it was a video, we'd really be tearing yep, into it. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, the broadcast has to be ended early. Uh, something came up. The three of us are going to head on over to <laughs> Cool River Restaurant and Tavern. Well, if this was a Phillies broadcast, they would probably bring one up to us. You know what? That's a great point. Yeah, that's like, a get great on the point. phone, Bob. But, you know, hmm. <laughs> maybe. Hmm. If Devin Prep continues on and uh, and they do this again, that might be that might be part of the next agreement. We can negotiate a little bit. Uh huh. No doubt you have those skills. <laughs> as long as they bring enough for Brady as well on the camera. Hey, he's been doing a great job on on camera today. It's been a lot of up and down action, but Brady's caught it all. That's right. 11 seconds left, and Devin Prep in no hurry. They will take a 30-plus point lead to the second half, meaning that the clock will run for the entirety of the second half. And that is how the first half will end. Cooper Fairlam has given great minutes to Devin Prep, and the Tide has put up 49 points. 49 points in one half of action. Very, very impressive. Bruce, what stood out to you? Uh... Just, I think, the, obviously, the uh, athleticism difference between the two teams, um, despite the fact that uh, Devin Prep is down two starters, they really looked like they had a co- cohesive offensive flow, that they were able to plug in 
really a, a number of different guys in there, Huck, and just didn't miss a beat on offense. And on the defensive side, they really limited DeLone uh, to just some tough shots. There was really nothing open for them. They were aggressive on the outside. Uh, Cam Keller never really got into any offensive flow for DeLone, and I think that that was what created this this big gap is he was saddled with three fouls, couldn't get into offensive flow, and uh, I think that that was the tail. Yeah, they, uh, you know, Coach Fisher is a really good coach, and he's definitely going to have his kids prepared every time they step on the court. I was really impressed that, you know, their headliner, Zane Conlon, averaging 18 and 9 a game, um, spent, a lot, spent, I think, all of the second quarter, um, aside from maybe 10 seconds on the bench and missed the last two or three minutes of the first quarter, and they still were able to, you know, get the balloon as lean out to, uh, to 33. Um, that was really impressive. They got contributions from everyone. Halftime here from Cardinal O'Hara High School, the site of a double header here today, the second matchup of the day, Archbishop Wood and Methacton. So right on the page that you are right now, that's where you want to stay as it pertains to watching the best in PIAA high school playoff basketball. Bruce Badgley, Huck Palmer, Bob Long here with Brady Joyce on the camera. Let's learn a little bit more about the sponsor of today's broadcast, Devin Prep.
Second half about to get underway here from Cardinal O'Hara High School. Devin Prep in control of this one, and we'll bring you now inside our broadcast booth. Bob Long, Huck Palmer, Bruce Badgley alongside. Huck, we'll start with you. Devin Prep. They struggled. Well, I don't even know if struggled is the word in the Philadelphia Catholic League, but they were certainly challenged in the Catholic League. They hosted a playoff game as the eighth seed, but we see that that record under 500 on the year is very deceiving when you talk about teams of their same classification size and, and elsewhere in the state when they're matched up in a matchup like this. Yeah, they were, they're 10 and 13 on the year. They did start to play better towards the end and, and it got them up to the AC, which is, which is an accomplishment in this league. They, uh, they played a tough non-league schedule. They went out, out west and they played North Catholic. Uh, they played Lincoln Park. Uh, they played a bunch of Philly pub schools during, during that time and, they challenge themselves, and, and and when you do that, when you get to games like this, it, it, it can definitely help. Right, and you think about some of their losses in the Philadelphia Catholic League. It was the teams like Newman, Goretti, and the like, and they pushed a lot of those bigger teams, bigger schools. They're in the lowest classification of any team in the Catholic League, and they're playing with the big boys, and they're playing with the best. Yes, when, when in that Newman game, to your point, uh, they lost the game by eight. They scored 83 points. Um, you know, they lost 91-83. They, 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 they can score and, and they can play a lot of different styles. They're well coached. They're tough. They're physical. Um, and, and they have some skill. Bruce, what have you seen through the first half here? Well, just the stark contrast between, you know, the two teams, the athleticism of Devin Prep, uh, DeLone Catholic. I mean, they've got some good players out there, but, you know, they've been taken advantage of really in, you know, the full court game. A lot of turnovers. And I think that's really what, uh, you know, kind of ballooned out of control for uh, DeLone Catholic in the first half. of Those turnovers led to so many easy chances for Devin Prep, and they took advantage of all of them. So we will have a running clock for the remainder of the contest. Zane Conlon with the three personal fouls back out there in the contest. Good finish. Shane Doyle on the cut. That was a set play, and that was executed perfectly. And then Doyle almost made the steal off the inbounds pass. Gets his hands on a lot of basketballs. With the three personal fouls. Back into the contest for DeLone Catholic is Cam Keller. Whitmer, that's a strong catch. Got to a good spot. And Kraft just physical bringing it down. Conlin. Contact. Got his own rebound, and that should be a jump ball. And it is. Alternate possession will send it back to DeLone Catholic. He had some good opportunities there, Huck. Just couldn't take advantage of it underneath. Yeah, Zane's a little frustrated. You know, he spent a lot of time on the bench. He's a really good player. He's a heady kid, um, and he does that a lot. He, he'll, he'll miss a shot. He goes back up and gets it. He creates space, and he's really crafty around the basket. I've known Zane Conlon and his family since the guy was in junior high. So, uh, you know, in, in large part, it's great for me to see him blossom, you know, at uh, Devon Prep. So uh, kudos uh, to Shane. He's worked hard his entire life to get where he's got. That's he has. Sure. And, he, and he was a, he was a um, rotation kid as a freshman. You know, he may, he may, get, he may uh, surpass the uh, 1,000 point barrier next year. He's got a solid chance to do it. Massively skilled move there by Reese Kraft, getting to his less strong, non-dominant right hand to finish that one yeah, in Kraft, the post. He, Kraft probably has the most next-level potential for this team with due to his size, his athleticism. Fairlam, great look. Ooh. 
A lot of contact. He got his own rebound and just padding the stats at this point. And I'll have to go back and watch his broadcast Bob, to do those stats. Yeah, it's going to have to tabulate a few things, no doubt about it. Gage Zimmerman picks up his dribble. Good skip pass off the down screen, open look. Yeah, those open threes just haven't been falling for DeLone today. Barely drew the iron that time off the hands of Gage Zimmerman. Under control, good finish. Zane Conlon got back to his right hand. Beautiful body control to get that one in. And a, oh my, I thought it was a double dribble there. Yeah, Doyle got in there with his hands. Picks up the personal foul. Orchard checks out. And Greg Perullo checks in. He's a senior, so he's going to get some, uh, some tick here. That's good to see. You know, this is such, such valuable minutes for Devin Prep because now it gets this new rotation some time to play together. I think that that could be really valuable down the stretch of the tournament. Definitely. The more they play together, the more comfortable to be with one another. A foul called on the dribble drive. It called against number 45, Cooper Fairland. Great hands. Kept in bounds by Perullo. And a blocking foul is called as Kraft dove to the hoop. Well, Perullo adds to the theme of this game so far. He's in the game for 15 seconds. He gets a deflection slash steal. Uh, and just like all the rest of his teammates have been doing since the game started, basically. Make sure you stay with us post game. I'll go down to the floor and get a post game interview. It might be with that guy, Shane Doyle, who took a hard hit. It's a really good seal on that weak side block, and then clear foul. Actually, pretty dangerous play to get undercut there like that. Aiden Whitmer picked up the personal foul. Doyle seems to be okay. Yep. Calmly knocks down that first one. The lead is swelled to 40. Doyle and Kraft feel like the guys, wouldn't you say, Huck? To go grab if we can? Yeah, definitely. And I, you know what? Shane's kind of like a, uh, a player for them that probably doesn't always get a lot of recognition. And and because his numbers, he's not the leading scorer. He's under 10 points a game. And sometimes the casual fan won't notice like the rest of the things a kid can provide. And he provides a lot in a lot of other areas. So I think that's a great choice. Kraft, strong hands there, guarded by the smaller Zimmerman. McClendon with the runner. Well done to save that in bounds. And I tell you, just not on the same page that time. Keller and Zimmerman. And you can kind of see Coach Fisher, you know, really getting these guys to play meaningful minutes in, you know, different situations. Now he had them out there pressing. I'm sure he's probably going to run some different defensive packages up there too, Hawk. Yeah, he's, he's you know, he's taken a couple starters out of the game already. Um, you know, you're, you're going to see a lot of the backups there. Count and end one for Zane Conlon. He's making up for lost time. He's going he's <laughs> gonna to get a few buckets here before he gets... Where he gets sent to the pine. I mean, another good look here because this is a great catch. He's nudged away from the hoop. Just kind of last ditch. He's really good near the basket, and he plays below the rim. It's not like he's, uh, you know, a high rise or anything like that. You know, he's 55% from the field, and, and, and in a league where he's contested a lot of the time, because there's there's a lot of good there's a lot of good players in the Catholic league, and there's a lot of good there's some good size, there's some good athletes. Um, he, he's no stranger being down there and being effective. Yeah, a- absolutely. I mean, he's the one that, quite honestly, has the tough matchups night in at night out. Strong rebound there, and that is going to be... The call is... <laughs> to lone Catholic basketball. 
Looks like he's going to be thrown off the leg of McClendon, but also might have ticked Braden Smith's leg on the way out, too. You know, uh, Devin Prep is, I think, second in the Catholic League in forcing turnovers. Now, conversely, they lead the league in committing them, too. Um, and that hurts them in games uh, in the league. But they they have <laughs> added to their total today. I, I would have to think the turnover total is approaching 20 for Delone. Costello got the block. Good kick. Open three, Perulo, no. And there is a foul. Perulo just nudges Braden Smith. Yeah, good foul there. I mean, uh, got it away from uh, heading right to the basket there. And with the running clock here, that may take us down to just about the end of the quarter. Another giveaway. Reminder, what's coming up next here, Archbishop Wood sponsoring a telecast at 5 p.m. where they take on Mefacton High School. That should be one heck of a basketball game. The five seed out of District 1, a really strong Mefacton team. You think back a couple of years, Huck, some of those really talented Mefacton teams. There was a team that was prepared to play Roman Catholic in a state quarterfinal and then the world shut down with covid mm -hmm. they had lost by seven points to roman catholic earlier that year and the fact that has just continued to build that program year over year i think surprised some people when they beat coatesville in that four or five playback game and that's a coatesville team that beat st joe's prep earlier in the year yeah it is a five six playback beg your pardon yeah, I haven't seen Methacton too much. I, I hear they're, are they a little young? Oh, deep three from DeLone Catholic. Liam, Liam O'Brien knocked that one down. And that is the end of the quarter. So tough to know, I guess, with that running clock. When that clock is ticking down, a quick third quarter, but a good bucket at the end for DeLone Catholic. Today's game is brought to you by Cool River Restaurant and Tavern, located in the Embassy Suites Hotel, Valley Forge. What makes Cool River so unique is the wood-burning grill and the slow smoker. They've managed to capture that Texas barbecue flavor in all of their steaks and chops. And all of their unique sauces are made from scratch in the kitchen. The hickory smoked prime rib is probably the best prime rib you will ever taste. And our honey-glazed Atlantic salmon with molasses bourbon butter is just spectacular. We like to say that Cool River is great for everyone. The Angus Hickory Grilled Cheeseburger and Chicken Sandwich are crowd pleasers for guests of all tastes and ages. The atmosphere is comfortable, the wine list approachable, the service impeccable. And we know that you will enjoy your visit to Cool River. Easy to reach at 888 Chester Brook Boulevard in Valley Forge. You know, Bob, everybody always compliments you on your play-by-play, uh, -play, but... Reading that, uh, you know, advertisement there of all that food, man, I mean, it, it, I, I'm sure that there's a line to get in that restaurant right now. I tell you what. It's it, mouth-watering, too, the way it, you present it. It's not a read when it comes from the heart. And I'm a guy who likes his beef, you know, chicken, barbecue. I love it all. Good contest by the rim. Devin Prep leads the break. Costello playing off two feet. Couple offensive rebounds. And McClendon chased it down off the hands of Zimmerman. I'm not sure uh, Devin Prep's um, field goal percentage is going to be, <laughs> like, really yeah. high in this, but they're just relentless getting shots up. Well, the offensive rebounding total will be just, I mean, mind-numbing when you see it. Held ball situation. It'll keep it here. Costello doesn't want to give it up. And someone's just been kicked out of the game, and I think it's Keller. Yeah. We'll get a look at this. This is going to be after the play. That's his second technical foul. And uh, end of a, a, a very stellar career here for Camp Keller. 1,100-plus point score. Ends a fabulous career for uh, DeLone Catholic here. Uh, obviously a lot of frustration. Yep. 
and uh, yeah, you he can't t- fault that. You can tell he's a competitor, yeah. and and you know he, he doesn't want you know his team's down by thirty nine points, and he's fighting and plugging along. But you know it, it's tough to go out that way. I mean, but you know eleven hundred points is nothing to sneeze at, and uh, he's been a four year starter, yeah, or four year at least a four year contributor, yeah, four year starter, four year right. starter. So, um, you know that's disappointing to this, you know, to see him come off the court in his last game due to a technical foul and not, you know, maybe substituted out and whereas, you know, sure. the fans here and his family can Yeah, that's that's the uh, cruel part about, you know, these these tournament games for seniors. I mean, things could just end so abruptly. No doubt about that. By the way, with Keller in terms of the four year starter you mentioned, Brandon Staub made special mention to tell us that he thought he could have started at the varsity level when it, when he was in eighth grade. That he was that developed at the time, physically, athletically, and a tremendous player, a tremendous career. Yeah, he's really put together. He's a strong kid. Grenchik will go to the line to shoot two. I'm sure he's a great kid. I mean, he's probably, to the moment, just probably got the best of him there. And Hey, they, I mean, they haven't played many games like this one, right? I mean, getting beaten the way they have by Devin Prep here today. It's been an impressive tied team. And I think there are going to be shockwaves sent throughout the bracket, Hawk. Not that they're sneaking up on anybody anymore. I think they snuck up on folks two years ago when they won the state title. But I don't think this particular group, the last two 3A title winners at the state level have come from the Philadelphia Catholic League with West Catholic doing it last year. I don't think that's a sneak up situation anymore. No, no, not for them. They they were a really good team two years ago too. I mean, you know, with uh, Ivy Pettit and uh, Cizlak, uh yep. Alan Cizlak was a good shooter for them. And then they had juniors like Lucas Orchard and Jason Holloway, and uh, they were they were a deep team. They were a really solid team. And that effort they put up at the Giant Center, I say all the time. I call it all the games that year. Good finish. That's Brian fine. Kamara. Yeah. Yeah, and but that, that team. Sorry, Bruce. The point was, I like they were playing as well as anybody at any classification two years ago when they played in the Giant Center. Go ahead, Bruce. No, it's it's you know great seeing Devin Prep here. Obviously, for me as a District Three guy, I'm trying to connect the dots, you know, with uh, DeLone Catholic and how this Devin Prep uh, team would rank against uh, you know the uh, winner and the runner-up in district three for for 3a columbia a solid team you know those teams are playing today Jaden craft let that one go that's reese Kraft's younger brother and that's the idea isn't it hawk i mean just the the devon prep type of guy all the way down to freshman year when you come to this program you know what type of style you're going to play under jason fisher one of the very best coaches in the philadelphia catholic league that was a program that came in, Hawk, and again, not to belabor this point, but, but you know, wasn't me saying it. Folks were saying, hey, how long is it going to take for this program to win a game in the Philadelphia Catholic League? Well, a couple of years later, they were top four in the league, went to a four-team playoff during the COVID year, won the state title the year after, and were deep in the playoffs last year. Now they've won the district and look really good again. It's- and, and that year where they had the four-team playoff, they played Roman, and they, they lost the game by two points. That's right. In that semifinal. That's right. And they were actually the three seed, not the four right. seed. There is a bucket from deep for Perulo. Well, that was the year that Newman Garetti had to forfeit some games due to an illegal player. And um, so that opened the door for another team to get in there and slide down. I don't I think Devin would have been in anyway, but I forget who the fourth place team was. It may have been Ryan against Wood. It was Ryan. And that was a year, by the way, that let's just say LaSalle got a tough break. Yes, now now it's coming back to me. The ineligible player did not play for Newman Garetti in the first game of the season. And guess who Newman Garetti had to play? LaSalle. And then he did play. They thought he was eligible. Newman Garetti did. And so what happened is Newman Garetti forfeited every single game that they played in the Catholic League with that young man on the floor, except for the first. And correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, but I think in that game against Newman Gretti, that first game, I think LaSalle lost that game on a buzzer beater by then freshman Rob Wright. By then freshman Rob Wright. Mm-hmm. Heiser Miller was the senior going to Temple next year, and Carl Aragale cleared everybody out and gave it to a freshman 
And that's when I knew pretty early that Rob Wright was going to be something special. Well, some stark reality set again on that DeLone Catholic bench with uh, those seniors. You can see they just got, uh, you know, pulled uh, you know, pulled out of the game there. Um, you know, that reality that their career is over. But, uh, you know, they can keep their heads held high. This is a team that, you know, made it to the district uh, championship game, albeit in a, 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 you know, losing performance last year. This year um, had a pretty solid effort. So, no way those guys should be hanging their heads uh, down. Uh, just great careers. And, you know, as we talked about, the cruel nature of this, you know, tournament, the sudden yep. death. And, uh, you know, not only do seasons end, but careers end. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I tell my younger kids all the time, don't take any games for granted. Um, because when they're done, they're done. And you don't get them back. Um, who's, in the, who's to say how many kids on, on Delone or either of these teams that are seniors will play at the next level? So, you know, enjoy it while you can, and uh, don't take anything for granted. You know, play every game like it's your last, and and, and develop uh, as best you can. Before we do go off air, by the way, stay with us post game. We will grab two members of Devon Prep and hopefully Jason Fisher for a post game interview as they move on to the round of 16 in the PIAA. Also, while you're here, like the video and subscribe to the channel. There's the lob for Robert. Couldn't hit it. But that certainly helps us with the algorithm and the metrics. And it lets you know if you subscribe to the channel when we go live. We do Philadelphia-based high school broadcasting all year long. Thanks, Dev, to Devin Prep for putting this broadcast on this evening. Costello's still out there fighting. That last rebound, he was not going to give it up. Robert. And they'll reset the offense with a minute 14 to go. Tough shot in the lane. Wouldn't drop for Braden Clayball. I think they're wanting to get the ball into the hands of somebody who... Uh, who hasn't scored much hasn't this scored, year. Yeah. Actually, I think what they might have been looking to do was to get a foul call so that they could get these substitutes into the game. Ezekiel Vandegrift and Ben Godecker. Perulo finished with the left hand. By the way, after a nice jump stop. I was just going to say that, Bob. Yeah. Nice jump stop and with the left hand. And one more thanks to our sponsor, Cool River Restaurant and Tavern. Support the folks that are supporting high school athletes, guys. We appreciate them making this a reality here today. And I certainly try to do that in my day-to-day -day life because it's it's hard. It's hard to get people out here calling these games. Technology isn't easy. We want to bring it to you at home. There's a triple from the outside. Great to see Logan Sabaka on the board. And Devin Prep impressively takes care of business here at Cardinal O'Hara. They move on to the round of 16 of the 3A basketball playoffs. So as Bob heads down to the court for his interview, Huck and I will, you know, kind of go through the recap here. And, I mean, obviously the score talks about, you know, what a dominating performance Devin Prep put forward here, Huck. But, boy, I think even the the, the, the bigger um, picture here is, you know, how well this new starting lineup really, you know, played together again and got a lot of meaningful minutes. Yeah, it was a good opportunity for a lot of different players for Devin Prep. Um, they established control right from the get-go. It was 27 to 10 first quarter. Uh, the pace was to their liking. Um, they were getting contributions for many kids. And, and with their headliner on saddle to the bench with, um, you know, with the two, two fouls and then picking up a third real quick, uh, upon entering in the second quarter. So uh, that was, that, I'm sure that's, uh, something, um, that Coach Fisher uh, is pleased to see. Yeah. And, and I saw him, you know, kind of experimenting a little bit too. So, and, uh, down to back. Thank you, Bruce. We are here with Reese Kraft, Shane Doyle, and head coach Jason Fisher from Devon Prep. Congratulations, guys, on a nice victory here this afternoon. 
What went well for you out there today, Reese, on the glass? Um, you know, I just saw a lot of opportunities to just get in there and uh, attack them on the glass. If I get us some extra points, extra possessions, and always help the team win, you know, so trying to help the team out. And Shane, stats guru Huck Palmer is up there watching the game live, and he told us that you guys uh, are incredible stealing the basketball. You in particular have been a league leader all year. You only padded those stats here today. You know, tell walk us through the, the art of a steal and how you knife your way into position. Yeah, we try to keep them on the, the short side of the court, and uh, we really uh, focus on just attacking the gaps and, uh, I don't know, just hand-eye coordination, just getting getting hand on the ball and help them, hopefully they uh, choke it up. <laughs> well, Reese, you have a program here that won the state title two years ago, a deep run last year. What's it going to take? to go the rest of the distance this year. I mean, it's really just toughness and our mentality, you know, coming out every day and trying to impose our will on everybody. You know, our coach really outspoken with trying to push our mentality and other people and not let, like, dictate what we want to do. So I think dictating our pace is really the key to our success. And Shane, on a quick turnaround, how do you guys get ready for the next one? Uh, just, we got off tomorrow and then we're right back at it on Monday. Tuesday, game on Wednesday, correct? Um, so just hard work, practice, compete, get better. Shane and Reese, thanks for doing this. Enjoy the victory. We'll see you guys down the road. Jason, congrats. Great to see you. Thank you, Thank you for covering the game. We appreciate it. Not a problem. So what what went well for you? You guys have now played a couple of games um, with, with the current construction of the roster. And guys like Shane and, and Reese really have to step up, and they have in a big way. Yeah, absolutely. It, um, when you lose two starters, it, it, you don't know how the team's going to respond. But those guys, uh, Cooper, uh, Mike, I, they um, they're all stepping up when they when they need to. And it um, the last week against Massive and Science, we played a different style. Today we played a completely different style, and they um, they're responding well. Like they're um, I'm looking forward to Wednesday night. Well, we are too. I mean, this is a great program, a great league. The Catholic League is representing itself very well on the state level. And you know, I don't know if responsibility is the word, but do you guys take that seriously as you project yourself and produce across the state level. Absolutely. It, it's one of the best leagues in the state. Well, it's the best league in the state, one of the best leagues in, in our area for sure. And when we get out of it, it we want to represent the league. And excited to watch Wood, Wood get a chance to play against Methacton now. But it, um, there's a little sense of pride being part of the Catholic League and then coming out and playing teams from across the state. So definitely. Jason, great win. Thanks for doing this. We'll let you get to your team. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hopefully we'll see you on Wednesday night. All right, Jason. Great. Thanks for doing this. Hawk and Bruce, back to you guys. You know, I thought the telling thing was just what Jason uh, talked about, about, you know, now the Catholic League, it's circle the wagons, okay? Now, you know, obviously they go toe-to-toe -to -toe against one another during the regular season. Then in the postseason, everybody kind of goes their, their separate way in their own classification, but yet they're all happy and they're all rooting for all these teams in the state tournament. I think that that's very telling, but... Something I think a lot of people already knew, right? No, definitely, Bruce. I mean, uh, once you get to this stage, uh, I think all the coaches uh, around the league respect one another, and they want to see um, success from all the teams in the league. It's almost like in, in the, at the college ranks, you know, you know, uh, X amount of ACC teams make the NCAA tournament, and, and, and unless they're playing one another, I think they're pulling for one another because it's just a good reflection of their league and and and, and the quality of their league. So. Um, definitely, and I, and I know a lot of these coaches, and I get to, I'm fortunate enough to get to talk to a lot of them, and, and, and I know they're pulling for one another, and I, I think that's a great thing. Yeah, I think it is, and, uh, um, you know, we really thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, thank Devin Prep for their support of this broadcast on Bob Long Sports and also Cool River Restaurant. I'll tell you what, uh, the way that Bob was describing it, I... I um, I don't know if I'm going to do this game here with Archbishop Water. I'm going to go to Cool River. I haven't decided yet. Wow, there's a lot of open space over there on Baltimore <laughs> Pike that I think a nice little restaurant could just drop right in there, and I'm advocating for Cool River. All right. Well, listen, thanks for joining us uh, this afternoon. Stay tuned for uh, our next PIAA event, Archbishop Wood and Methacton. So for Bob Long, Huck Palmer, I'm Bruce Badgley. Stay tuned for more PIAA action coming right up.